like a bird on a wire, like a drum in a midnight choir. I have tried in my way to be free, like a fish on a hook. Like a night from some old-fashioned book I have saved all my ribbons for thee Oh, and if I have been unkind Oh, well, I hope that you will just let it go by Well, I hope you know It was never, 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 never to you Like a baby still born oh, ooh, Like a beast fighting with his big old horn I have torn everyone who reached out for me But I swear by the song by oh, I have done it wrong. Oh, I'll make it all up to be. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Because I saw a beggar leaning on a wooden crutch. Oh, well, he called out to me. Do not ask for so much. But then the brave young woman. Leaning on a darkened nose Well, she cried out to me Honey, why not, why not, why not Ask for more like a bird on a wire Oh, ooh, like a drunk Singing in a midnight choir Tried in my way I have tried in my sweet way I have tried in my way to be free. Thanks. We um, we can't build a world we can't imagine, and uh, so this one is an old one and uh, and a good one. Imagine there's no heaven It's easy if you try No hell below us And above us only sky Imagine all the people living for today oh, Imagine there's no countries it isn't hard to do Nothing to kill or die for And no religion to Imagine all the people Living life in peace Well, you, you may say I'm a dreamer But I am not the only one Well, I hope someday join us and the world will live as one as one as one imagine no possessions i wonder if you can no need for greed or hunger of brotherhood of man and a resistance made of women imagine all the people sharing all the world will you you may say i'm a dreamer but i am not the only one well i hope someday you will join us and the world will live Someday you will join us and the world will live as one.
Thanks so much. I'll be back later. Let's give it up for Tay one more time, please. So can we all, we're going to start the agenda. Can everybody, let's get up on these steps. Hey, Chris Stegman. Hey, everybody over there, let's get up on these steps. We're going to get the agenda rolling today. How's everybody feeling this afternoon? Now, I think most of us are here because we believe, or all of us, that health care is a human right. Do we believe that health care is a human right? Do we believe that we need single payer and we need it now? Yeah. One more time. Do we need single payer now? Yeah. What do we want? Single payer. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Single payer. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Single payer. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Single payer. When do we want it? Now. All right, I think we're getting warmed up. That's good. That's good. So, as you know, this event today has been put on by Whole Washington. Let's give everybody a big round of applause for that one. We've got a lot of uh, amazing organizations out here who believe right along with us that health care is a human right and that we all deserve health care. So I want to tell you about a few things that you can do to help out with Whole Washington. Um, one of those things is pretty easy. You can tweet, Facebook, Post a video selfie about a, a healthcare horror story with the hashtag Whole Washington because we want to hear your story. We, wa we want to spread that story. Call your representatives and ask if they support. Call. Uh oh. Check, check. I'm back. Call your representatives and ask if they support single payer. Pass a resolution in your local organizations supporting single payer and your LB, individual group, or other organizations. Write a letter to the editor of your local paper. Talk about single payer with your neighbors, family, coworkers, and let them know why it's important to you. We need to get this something that everybody's talking about, that everybody's aware of, and that everybody understands why it's so important. And another really big thing that we can do, do today, right now, is you can come over here to the Washington table. You can bid on the auction items, and by the way, Leslie wants you to know that they do accept credit cards, so you can do that. Buy t-shirts, make a donation, because we're about $6,000 short still. Again, the economic study that will be the final piece to writing the legislation that we need. And we want single payer in Washington State, do we not? Yeah! Do we want single payer in Washington State? Yeah! So I do have the pleasure of introducing our first speaker for today. He is a former legislator by the name of Seth Armstrong, and he's here to tell you a little bit about Physicians for National Healthcare. And they've been very active locally since about 2005, I believe, pushing for universal healthcare for all. So please welcome Seth with a big round of applause. Good morning. Put a smile on the face of everybody who gets sick. The way to do that is finish the job. The Affordable Care Act has begun our route towards sustainable health care, following up with Medicare for All, which is the best word for single payer, Medicare for All. Health coverage is the only method that will cover everyone and reduce health costs substantially. The Affordable Care Act, as limited as it is, nevertheless follows completely failed attempts by six Republican and Democratic presidents to get this through, beginning with Teddy Roosevelt in about 1900. The first, the Washington Health Security Trust, is the bill that's available here in the Washington State Legislature. It uses a Medicare for All system to bring health coverage to all Washington residents. The coverage will be affordable, comprehensive, and less expensive than the Affordable Care Act. It creates a platform upon which an improved health care delivery system can be built. Cut the bureaucratic mess. Take away the 30% of administrative costs in the current insurance-based system and get us down to the 3%. That's what Medicare for All can cost. Patients 
with their physicians will make their own health care decisions. This is reform payment system, not socialized medicine. It's a reformed payment system. That's all. And getting health insurance instead of the raises your work has earned. We haven't gotten raises in this country since 1980. Instead, business has been putting money into your health care. We ought to have health care and the raises that support the economy and build jobs. <laughs> Businesses will be helped. Payroll assessments will be less expensive in most cases than what businesses are currently paying for health care coverage for their employees. The Washington Health Care Security, the Washington Health Security Act will provide better coverage than most current employer-sponsored plans. There will be no deductibles, only modest or no co-pays. There will be a low limit to out-of-pocket expenses. Essentially, all doctors and hospitals will be included. There will be no bankruptcies for medical bills, for enrollees, and the Washington Health Security Trust. It should also reduce the other li insurance line medical liability premiums. Everybody in, nobody out. Thank you, Seth. Let's give it up for Seth one more time. Let's get loud. We're outside. We're having fun. Beautiful day. So earlier, we heard, as we were camping, we heard some beautiful music, and now I have the pleasure of uh, getting to actually give a formal introduction of the musician. Her name is Tay Phoenix, and she is a resistance artist. Her electro pop protest anthem, personally, is making waves in the anti-Trump movement and her subvertising collective. Resistance Air was responsible for the We Outnumber Him Resist banner that flew over New York City on inauguration day. She's here today to share her healthcare story and play the acoustic version of Personally for us. And just another cool thing that I was just made aware of is she has uh, put in for an auction item a house party with her coming and personally playing as one of the auction items. So get up there and bid on that and give a big round welcome to Tay Phoenix. Thanks. Thank you so much for being here and for having me. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you my story and then I'm going to sing you a song. Um, so I was dehumanized when I was a child um, and in a number of different ways. And like so many people who have adverse childhood experiences, I suffer from chronic physical and mental health problems as a result. I have bipolar, I have severe post-traumatic stress, I have asthma, and a host of other physical conditions that I will have to deal with for the rest of my life. And I didn't ask for any of that. All I'm asking for is to be able to see a doctor when I need to. Because, thank you. Because of the Affordable Care Act, I was able, finally, because under the Affordable Care Act, mental health care is an essential benefit, I was finally able to see a therapist and get medicated after 20 years of being bipolar and unmedicated. And I am here today because of Obamacare. So, thanks, Obama. <laughs> um, and we don't have to wait for the folks in Little Washington to get their act together to get quality health care for every Washingtonian right here. We can do it for ourselves. We don't have to wait for that. We don't have to wait on the federal government. So I'm so honored to be a part of this whole Washington initiative and to, to watch people you know, working together to get this done here. This whole idea of everybody in, nobody out is really what we're fighting for on all fronts, right? It's not only about healthcare, it's also about race, about gender, about sexual orientation. Everybody in, nobody out. There is no them, there is just us. And until we really get that in ourselves, right? it's, it's easy to see a Nazi on the street and say, I'd like to punch that guy. Right? It's, it's harder to call your boss out on making a racist comment or your uncle or your best friend. 
But the hardest thing of all is to look inside of ourselves and see how that toxic stuff that's in our culture has gotten inside and to say, I want to do something about that. We have to take it personally when there's an attack on any of us, because an attack on one is an attack on all, and that's what this song is about. Take it personally, that's so really bad advice. Cause it's been personal for centuries, and real people pay the price. Hey, what's the matter? I never thought of that before. What's the matter? Do we need another will? Yeah, choices become violence when we break humanity. So we respectfully reserve the right. So take that. You say you have a right to your opinion, and I guess that's true. But it sure sounds like your sacred opinion is that some people are less human than you. Hey, what's the matter? We never called on that before. What's the matter? Do we need another warrior? Choices become violent. So we break humanity, so we respectfully reserve the right to take that personal ability. Looking for compassion instead, but I'm too furious to keep throwing us under the bus just to stay ahead. Cause I've been this long. Hey, what's the matter? You never realized that before. What's the matter? Do we need another warrior? Choices become violent when we break humanity. So we respectfully reserve the right to take. Well, that's some really bad advice. Thank you. Don't forget, we outnumber him. Resist. That was awesome. Let's give it up again for Terry. Wow. Feel bad for everyone else now. Okay, Jeff Sowers. He's here from our Revolution Thurston County to talk about the Summer for Progress. So let's welcome Jeff up to the microphone. All right, good afternoon. Thank you so much for being here today and showing up for Universal Single Payer Healthcare. My name is Jeff Sowers, and I'm here today on behalf of our Revolution to tell you about the People's Platform. I am so excited about this people's platform because it captures the spirit and the vision of the Bernie Sanders campaign and what kind of society we could have if government really started putting people before corporate profits. <laughs> A society where all people had health care, where college was free, <laughs> where every worker had a living wage job with good benefits, where we dramatically reduced our carbon emissions and could rapidly convert it to a 100% clean energy economy, and where we established peace and the elimination of all nuclear weapons. <laughs> This is the kind of society that most people want. And it's the kind of society that we can have if we are willing to come together into a mass organized movement to translate the public will into political reality at the ballot box. Woo! And that's what the People's Platform is all about. 
building and organizing this movement at a national level. So let me tell you a little bit about what the People's Platform is. The People's Platform is the focal point of a national campaign called Summer for Progress, sponsored by a national coalition of progressive organizations including Our Revolution, Democratic Socialists of America, National Nurses United, and dozens more that have come together in a campaign calling on all congressional representatives to support eight progressive bills that provide bold yet practical solutions to some of the most pressing issues of our time. Solutions that will dramatically improve the lives of all Americans. The People's Platform includes H.R. 676, the Expanded and Improved Medicare for All Act, which will enact a national comprehensive single-payer health care system that covers every single American. This is a comprehensive plan that covers prescription drugs, long-term care, mental health, dental, vision, hearing, and it does it without co-pays, deductibles, or co-insurance. The People's Platform also includes the College for All Act that provides free college tuition for all working and middle-class families. The Raise the Wage Act that will raise the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour. The Justice is Not for Sale Act that will abolish the private prison industry at every level of government. <laughs> and a climate bill that will rapidly transition us into a 100% clean energy economy. And more that you can learn about over at the Our Revolution table, where you can go sign the petition for the People's Platform. Our country is facing a major social crisis on many levels. Millions of people are hurting, and the status quo simply is not working. The election of Donald Trump is a symptom of that. Charlottesville is a symptom of that. Now is the time where we progressives must come together and lead the way forward to a better future. So we are calling on Denny Heck and all House representatives to stop kowtowing to the corporations and start standing up for the people and support the people's platform. The people of this district are watching, and we are no longer willing to accept the status quo that is leading our society down the path of environmental and social destruction. We want representatives who will fight for the people, and we intend to have representatives who will fight for the people. Making this revolution happen depends on all of us working together. So please, if you haven't done it already, before you leave today, stop by and make sure you sign up with Hill Washington. Stop by and sign up to support one of our wonderful local candidates currently running for office. And then stop by the Our Revolution table and sign the petition for the People's Platform. We will be delivering this petition to Denny Hicks' office this uh, Tuesday. So please stop by and add your name today. Together, I know we will make this progressive revolution happen. Switch your mic stands. Let's give it up for Jeff. I said, let's give it up for Jeff. And let's give it up for the people's platform. Am I right? Any candidate who runs on that platform is going to have any day. Tell you what. So next, I have the pleasure to introduce Sarah Smith, who not only is a congressional candidate from CD9, but she's also here representing brand new Congress. Uh, yeah, let's give her a big welcome. Hi, good morning. Uh, 
So first of all, thanks so much to everyone for coming out today and for supporting Whole Washington. Oh, get closer to the mic. All right. Um, so thanks everybody for coming out here and just supporting Whole Washington. I know that this has been a really trying week for a lot of members of our community, and it's really heartening that we're all still showing up for things, showing up for our community and for universal health care in the state of Washington. Uh, so my name is Sarah Smith. I'm running with brand new Congress and Justice Democrats to represent Washington's ninth district. <laughs> And I'm running on a platform that believes in the power of people. Right now, we have a disproportionate voice of corporations in our politics. There's too much corporate influence, and there's not enough people influence. And so I'm running on a platform that takes climate change seriously, that fights back against the influence of these corporations in our government, and that works towards debt-free college solutions and education solutions for all Americans. I believe that we can right the scales of inequality, and one of the ways that we can do this is by doing what we're doing right now, which is standing up with organizations like Whole Washington to fight for universal health care at a state level. So we all have a collective responsibility to each other. I believe that this is not only a moral argument, but this is also a self-evident truth. We owe each other dignity, compassion, and respect. And that's the traits that have brought you all out here today. You care about your friends, you care about your family, you care about your neighbors, and you care about people that you've never met. You've come together to fight for the world that we all deserve. And for that, you're going to have my infinite gratitude. Thank you for being the best America has to offer and for sharing this dream of a better world today. Our state and our government have an obligation to provide the most basic needs to our people, to ensure medical bankruptcy doesn't ruin a family for multiple generations. Our Declaration of Independence guarantees us three inalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And to secure these rights, governments are instituted among them. Right now, we are telling the people that the right to life is satisfied simply by breathing, which some people still can't do without aid. We are failing the people by not providing access to life-saving medical care. The system is choosing whose life is more important based on the amount of money they have. That's a moral failure. That's a failure to provide the most basic of unalienable rights to our people, and it must change. A 20-year-old American worker has a one in four chance of becoming disabled before reaching retirement age. That means for many of us, we're going to be personally affected by the struggle to receive quality care in our lifetimes if we do not take immediate steps to address the staggering inequality in our current health care system. A single payer approach is the only way that we can be truly certain that this problem is solved, not pushed off to the next generation, and not tabled by half measures that fail to meaningfully address the seriousness of this issue. Despite the current national political scene, we have never been closer to achieving meaningful change and access to excellent health care for our Americans. Single payer Medicare for All is currently currently at or above 60% nationwide and is even more popular than ever before here in Washington. Woo. I'm no stranger to illness. My father is a man who survived Nazi V2 bombings in London, and he almost died because he stepped on a stinging metal while he was doing yard work. I developed a spontaneous bone growth in my hip that required surgery. My nephew was diagnosed with stomach cancer at age 10, and my aunt was diagnosed with colon cancer at age 40. None of these people chose to become sick. I certainly didn't. Illness and disability don't know salary, they don't know occupation, and they don't know credit score. My husband, Jay, who is graciously filming from the steps, <laughs> he had a life-threatening genetic illness as an infant. And his father was laid off with, from his job, reducing his family's annual income from 66000 a year to 15000 And with it, it took their health care. They were forced to utilize SSDI in order to be able to afford his chronic, severe, unpronounceable condition. <laughs> and it's only because of the safety net of SSDI that I'm a happily married woman today. And that hits way too close to home for comfort for me. For me, there is no clearer example than this one that we cannot have a system that ties our, our health care to our jobs, and they must remain separate. 
Whole Washington is leading the way in making this vision a reality right here in our state. Realizing this goal is going to take action at every level, from gathering signatures in the streets to bringing legislation to the Capitol here in Olympia. But nobody does it alone. There's a place for everyone in this community of activism, but we cannot become fatigued and we cannot let ourselves become tired. The road to justice is now, and we're only going to go the distance together with persistence. We can't afford to be distracted or to turn against each other in the face of frustration. And in the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., it's a cruel jest to say to a bootless man that he should lift himself up by his own bootstraps. Too many Americans are quietly suffering without the means to realize a healthy, happy life. And it's time we lift each other up for the good of the many, for the dignity of all, and for a future worth realizing. Together with whole Washington all, and all of these incredible organizations today that have stepped up to fight for our future, we can achieve our dream of single payer coverage for all people in Washington state. So my name is Sarah Smith, and I'm running for Congress in Washington's 9th District because I believe we can give all people access to health care because all people deserve compassion and dignity, and because I know that together the people of our country can come together and build up our community. Vote for me in 2018, vote for single parents here in Washington State, and let's keep fighting for this future every day until we have it. So thank you for having me here today, thank you for listening to me, and thank you to whole Washington for leading the charge for single parents right here in Washington State. Thank you. You should get used to me asking you to get loud. Let's give it up for Sarah one more time. So next, I have the pleasure to introduce to you the first trans chair of the Thurston County Democrats, Boudicca Walsh. Hello everyone, I am Boudicca Walsh. Um, I am a local radical trans uh, a witch of Olympia. and. Uh, Thank you, thank you. Before I speak, um, I do have Florence here from our Revolution Thurston. Give it up for Florence. She has a quick announcement to make about an upcoming movie. I'd like to you all have her attention. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to recommend that you all go see uh, the new Al Gore movie, The Inconvenient Sequel. It's absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much. All right, folks, so uh, usually when you see me speaking, you see that I have copious notes in front of me. That's because um, as someone who has social anxiety, I generally try to plan out what I'm going to say so that I can not look like a stuttering fool. So uh, we're, uh, I was not surprised uh, to be asked to speak, but I am honored to be speaking in front of this audience. Thank you all for coming out here today to support single player for all of us. As a trans person, single payer healthcare is very important to me. Um, even under the reforms that were made under the Affordable Care Act, um, I had to change insurances twice just to find um, a plan that would cover the services that I needed uh, for a price that I could afford. Um, I believe that under single payer healthcare, uh, trans people in this state will have a much easier time accessing healthcare and have a much uh, easier time getting the services that we need. Um, to, in order to be equal, equitous members of society. Um, so, and I'm just glad to see everyone here today to support that measure because it's very personally important. And I know many people here, it's also very personally important. Um, Thank you, thank you. Um, one thing I did want to talk about too, um, as Chair of Thurston County Democrats, one of the things that I ran for was to intersectionalize the movement um, on the left. Um, I know that many people here are Democrats, Greens, DSA, um, folks from Surge, folks from the Black Lives Matter, uh, folks who are anti-fascists, um, you know, and single payer is relevant also for uh, racial justice as well because uh, uh, 
you know, if I've already spoken to needing support as a trans person, um, uh, if people uh, of racial minorities are being beaten in the streets, which is already happening in our state, actually uh, in our city as well, um, you know, they need to have health care that they can afford. I'm a, it'd be really terrible to Sorry. It'd be very terrible to be bashed in the streets and then not be able to afford care, um, you know, be crippled for life uh, physically and financially. Um, we, we also need single payer because with, with the dollars going towards um, adequate mental health care, we could actually address the disease known as racism that we have uh, here in the city and across the state and across our nation. Um, I just wanted to take a minute to uh, talk about people that we have lost. This is an uh, Antifa flyer that I was, I was handed. Um, these are just a few of the people uh, recently who have um, been murdered by white supremacists just this year. Um, Timothy Coleman, stabbed to death by anti-racist, uh, anti-black racist James Harris Jackson, March 20th in Manhattan, New York City. Richard Carlos III, stabbed to death by alt-right member Sean Urbanski, May 20th in College Park, Maryland. Rick Brest and Tailson Nam Kaimish, stabbed to death by Patriot Pro Associate and right winger Jeremy Christian, May 26th in Portland, Oregon. Heather Hare, run down by James Field Jr., member of fascist group Vanguard America in Charlottesville, Virginia on August 12th. I appreciate everyone coming out here today for single pair. Um, I do notice that many folks here are white, and I appreciate you coming out here. I want all of us who are white to be aware of the privilege that we have had. That um, you know, I was lucky enough to be raised in a middle class family uh, where I had health care uh, when I was a child until I was I, I was lucky enough to actually maintain health care because of Obama. Um, but you know, for many of our uh, brothers, sisters, and uh, non-binary kindred uh, of color, that was not the case. Um, and you know, this is not just for us, this is for everybody. So thank you all for being here. Remember that our efforts are only truly just if we are centering um, all voices into this effort. Um, and as someone who is committed to fight for social and econ economic justice, I want to thank you all for coming out here today. Let the movement fight on. Together we must. Give it up for Boudicca again, come on. So I, I do, uh, Boudicca reminded me of something that I think would be important uh, for us to do right now. Um, she talked about victims of hate, um, and especially with what just happened in Charlottesville, I'd ask us all to give a moment of silence uh, for victims of, of hate and white supremacy across our country. Uh, yeah, really please. Thank you all. Sorry to switch up into a more somber moment, but it's important to acknowledge um, that we fight for a lot of things, and, and one of the things that we fight for is, is to end hate. And uh, taking health care away from us is just another reminder of all the ways that we're persecuted. So let's try this again. Uh, what do we want? When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Single when do we want it? Now! So now, we talked about the people's platform, we've talked about single pair, and what's amazing for those of us who live in Thurston County is we have a lot of candidates here who support single pair, who support the people's platform, and I don't know about you, that even if an elected official doesn't have the power to influence things like single pair, if they don't support it, I don't even want to go for dog catcher for you. I don't, if you don't support it, you aren't getting a dog catcher. So I have the pleasure to introduce the next board commissioner in District 2 for the Olympic Board Commissioner position, Bill Pittsburgh. Give him a big round of applause.
Well, welcome everybody. It's so great to be here today. What great weather, huh? Yeah. A little break from 90. I can take off my hat in this kind of weather. <laughs> so yeah, Eric said uh, I'm running for Port Commissioner. It's in District 2. So, yeah. yes, thank you. I've been a long time Thurston County resident, and as I've been going on the, on the stump and running on talking to folks, um, this doesn't come up a lot because it's not really related to the port, but I would submit to you all today that it absolutely is. The port serves all of Thurston County. We're all residents here in Thurston County, and in one way or another, we are all affected by health care in Thurston County. Would you agree? Yeah! I want to share with you a little story that... Uh, happened to me very recently. My mom had a stroke last month. And so I've been very impacted by single payer recently. And the way that plays out is this. She was at Sacred Heart Hospital and she was getting care. She was there for about seven or eight days and uh, was still very visibly affected by the stroke. It hit 15% of her cerebellum, and for folks that aren't familiar with brain physiology, I know I wasn't back then. I am more familiar with it now. The cerebellum is a part of the brain that controls much of what our body does in gross motor function before it bifurcates, before it's split out into two different sides. So what that means is my mom was having a hard time moving any part of her body. But we got to seven or eight days, and the nurse came in, and she said, my mom can't be here anymore. And I said, what? What do you mean my mom can't be here? And they said, well, the insurance company says she only gets so many days of support. She only gets so many days paid. And I said, wait a second. They are more concerned about their profits than the health of a patient. What the hell? I'm going to say that one more time. What the hell? What the hell? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> that just seems wrong to me. And so I'm a little pissed off. I'm a little angry right now with healthcare in America. They successfully, after an appeal, which was denied, they successfully moved her to another care facility. And here we are at the end of about two weeks of care, and they've come back and said, your mom's ready to go home. I said, well, wait. Can she walk without a rocker? And they said, no. I said, can she take a shower by herself? Well, it depends on the day. I said, oh, can she do stairs yet? Because she's got three stairs to get into her house. It doesn't matter. She's ready to go home. I said, well, why is that? And, I said, and they said, because the insurance said so. The insurance said so. Oh, yeah. And I said, what the hell? What the hell? <laughs> so yeah, it comes down to profits. And if there's no other reason to be in favor of single payer, I would, I would respectfully submit to you all that one of the reasons should be to overcome profit-driven health care for our loved ones and for the most, most vulnerable in our areas. What is amazing to me is I did a little a little research this morning. I was listening to Noam Chomsky. Anybody familiar with Noam Chomsky? <laughs> Under Reagan, one of the right's most stalwart heroes of our time, 70% of the people said health care is a right. Under Reagan, 40% 40, 40 of the people thought health care was a constitutionally given right. Wow. That was 37 years ago Reagan was in office, and here we are today, and we're still talking about single-payer health care. But guess what? I still think it's a right. <laughs> now, I'm running for an elected position. And I can't get y'all to do anything just yet, but maybe this. I want everybody to stand up. Go ahead, stand up. It's not, unless you can't. 
And I want you to do this. Put your hands on your hips. Now, where's Sarah Hansen? Sarah Hansen? Sarah Hansen right there. Sarah Hansen sees me in this pose a bunch. Hands on your hips. Everybody get your hands on your hips. This is the I'm going to do something pose. She calls it the stance. You all have shown me that you can do the stance, that you're ready to take on something. And I don't care if right now that means advocating for a loved one or if that means calling your local elected. You have assumed the position and that you can do something today. My name is Bill Fishburn. I'm running for Port Commissioner District 2. Thank you for your time. I'm still in the position, I ain't leaving it early until I go do something. Let's give it up for Bill one more time. So again, we're going to keep on this theme of amazing candidates who support single power health care. So next I have the pleasure to introduce to you Renata Rollins, running for Olympia City Council. Well, good afternoon. Um, my name is Renata Rollins. So great to see everybody here. I'm an advocate, a social worker, a writer, a poet, and I'm running for Olympia City Council. And, <laughs> and I wholeheartedly endorse the whole Washington Initiative for Universal Single Payer Health Care for Washingtonians. Thank you. Um, thank you, whole Washington. I think. Um, uh, as a candidate, and, I, and if elected, I believe I would be the only member of city council who um, only has health insurance thanks to Apple Health. So I'm grateful for the work that has be done, been done um, actually for decades to get us to the point we are. And we are a part of that river moving forward to have a, a better health care system for all. Um, I, am, I, I support whole Washington and I support universal health care because I'm tired of seeing my friends having to fund surgeries and major health care operations and services through GoFundMe online, which is in my mind a system of all of us begging for the few crumbs that we have down here to help each other. Um, I'm, I'm a, a couple years ago I had a... Um, a dental problem that turned out to require a uh, a root canal and a crown, and I thought, well, no problem. I have health care. That's great. Um, but it was a problem, and I actually um, found out that the that the health care coverage that I had um, didn't cover those. They were considered elective um, operations. So <laughs> I ended up having to pay two thousand dollars out of cash, and I was fortunate because the um, my landlord was understanding and was able to let me um, have a month without paying rent. But not everyone has that uh, that privilege, and we need a better system. And those of us with the privilege and the platform of holding office or running for office have to be loud voices for uh, for universal health care, for dignity for all. Um, I also, because I think we all here are kind of on the same page about this, I want to push the message a little bit further and say that we not only need to, um, to demand universal health care, but we need to demand competent and accessible health care for all. And a few examples of what I mean. Um, I come from working in the social service field, and I've worked with numerous folks who are homeless and who have Apple Health, so they have access to a doctor in theory, but they're not able to find doctors who respect them for who they are, for their situation, um, for their unique needs that come with that situation. I worked with a guy who um, had a, a blood, what do they call it, a blood infection that reached his heart, um, and he had surgery, he was in the hospital for a few weeks and they were getting ready to discharge him because they, they because just like Bill said the insurance said that he was okay to be discharged to his home even he didn't have a home <laughs> but that didn't matter um, I know uh, uh, a friend of mine a woman of color who, uh, who has children um, she would when she brings her children in for um, for their health, for whatever's going on with their health, a lot of times she is meeting with doctors who don't believe her, don't believe the symptoms, and I know a lot of women in general who have that experience as well. Um, also, for those of us who are queer or part of the transgender community, um, we need to have healthcare providers who are competent to our unique needs. This. 
where we are in history, our focus as a movement has to be closing the gaps between disparate groups, closing the gaps between each other as individuals, as cultures, as communities. And a big part of that is closing the health care gap. So thank you, Hall Washington, for leading that initiative in our state. Onward. Let's hear it for Renata again. Come on. So before I introduce our next speaker, I want to remind everybody the auction is still open. And uh, I've been told it's kind of funny, but uh, you can get your dirty beans, and then like an hour later, you have to trap toilet paper. OK, like six people left. Does that make, is it funny? Was it funny? Did it work? It worked, I think. 25% of people laugh and makes it work. Okay. Anyway, so uh, next I'd like to introduce another Olympia City Council candidate who I actually happen to know is running against someone who does not support single pair. And her name is Lisa Parsley. Please welcome Lisa. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Um, just the other night, I was telling everybody once again why I'm running, and that is because I was raised to give back to my community that gives to me. And as I told them, I did not know on that Wednesday morning after the general election that I would be given examples of why I'm doing this sometimes every day, every week, what's happening in Washington and what our president is leading our country to. So I am here because if we're going to have any impact on Washington, it starts in our local area. It starts in our small towns. It starts in our mid-sized towns. It starts in our counties and it goes to our state. And we turn to Washington, D.C. and we say, hello. We are not bigots and we will not have a president who promotes it. We will not do that. Over the last six months, we have spent time talking about the homelessness issue, which clearly has reached a humanitarian level, not just in our town, but in a lot of towns in this country. We have the climate change coming, and when the science deniers finally are actually saying that, we know we have a problem. Every city and every state and every country is facing this. Olympia is no different. We have a little piece of water out front of our city downtown, and it will be on our front steps in the next 30 to 50 years. But I'm also running because I'm a progressive. I believe in progressive values. My employees get $15 an hour minimum wage. They all get their benefits paid for, including health care. Health care is very near and dear to my life. I'm a, I'm a veterinarian. So I get to see health care from a unique angle. And while I talk about my mom, who was a school teacher and was, did most of the raising for us, the reason she did that is my dad was a doctor, and his dad was a doctor, and my sister's a doctor. And I know what the health care system has done. If you could have talked to my grandfather, who was practicing during the Depression, he was got his MD in the 1920s. He said that during the Depression, I didn't have a lot of money in my pocket, but my roof was repaired, my garden was full, we had enough food on the table. But do you want to know what, in the Depression, we did not have? We did not have the insurance companies. We did not have the drug companies. Most of the drugs during that time were sent out to compounding pharmacies. It wasn't until we developed the tablet and a way to mass produce drugs that we had the drug companies enter the healthcare issue. It wasn't until we got preventative insurance in the 1960s and 70s, which by the way, my grandfather was adamantly against, that we started to have the insurance companies dictating to doctors what they can and cannot do. That is wrong. 
when I have a sister who's currently practicing medicine in Portland and Oregon, by the way, she says she wishes she could be here on the steps yelling very loud for single pair. And you can follow her, by the way, on Twitter. Her name is Marianne Parshley. She says, by all means, follow me and talk to me. She told me a story once that curled my toes. A woman came into her with a lump in her breast. She applied to the insurance company and asked them for permission to do a mammogram and get an oncology, surgical oncology consult. The insurance company said, I'm sorry, she's reached her maximum. She can come back in six months. So here is what's happening to the doctors. I just learned a neat statistic today. 62% of MDs in this country right now are for single pairs. We have a friend in those who are in health care. I see a friend over here, Tammy, who is a nurse, and she's out here supporting us. We need to drag the people in that are the healers because they are the voice. They are the ones that are there because they have a true calling, and single pair is the only way they're going to fulfill that calling. And I can say that for a fact because I come from that family. Now, what can I do at the city council level? Because it all comes back to what I'm running for. I agree with Renata. I agree with Bill. I agree with everybody that has stood up here. As an elected official, you have to speak out, even if you don't have a direct impact on that. Whole Washington, buy the t-shirts. Okay, wear them. Let the public know where you stand. And then, when you look locally, help the local governments provide progressive small businesses incentives to do things that we've done, providing health care until we can get that single pair. And you should reach out to your representatives in D.C. and say, keep doing a good fight because until we get the single pair, Affordable Care Act is what we have and we have to protect it. And maybe it needs being fixed, but we have to protect it. And one day we will have universal health care because as Thomas Jefferson said, we hold these truths self-evident. Pursuit of liberty, happiness, and I forget the other one, but I would add life. Life, life, life thank you. I was hoping somebody would come up and save me because quite frankly, I'm dyslexic, so if I have to read something in front of you, it will come out completely different. Um, but I would hazard to guess that Thomas Jefferson would also say education and health care and the right to live okay that is what we are here fighting for i'm lisa partially i'm running olympia city council position number five thank you you know the drill give it up for lisa one more time so this this is uh one of my favorite parts uh, of every event is the thank yous. Okay. Oh, uh, some people are going to have to stand up that might not have known they had to. So first, the interim director of Hull, Washington, Georgia Davenport. Let's give Georgia a big round of applause. <laughs> Holly Masters. Where's Holly at? Her tire broke. Her tire broke. But give her a round of applause anyway. We'll let her know you did it. Sarah Hansen, I know I saw you. <laughs> Leslie. <laughs> Kyogi had to take off already, I believe, but let's give him a round of applause for all his help today. And then the always incredible tandem of Florence Vincent and Susan Slack. There's Florence, what's Susan though? So next, I'm gonna introduce you, Chelsea Westad running for Tom Water City Council. Welcome, Chelsea.
Thank you very much, uh, Eric, for the introduction. Again, for those of you uh, who don't know me, my name is Chelsea Rosset. I'm running for Tumwater City Council, position number five. And um, I want to tell you a little bit today about why I ran for this position and why what universal health care means to me. Um, I'm a member of the Socialist Party, and I believe that, thank you, thank you. I, you don't always see a lot of socialist candidates on the ballot, and I believe that people have the right to see their values represented uh, in November when they go to the polls. People have the right to know uh, what socialism means to me. Socialism means that I am against capitalism, and capitalism represents the, the greed and the heartlessness and the callous nature with which we treat patients who are sick and suffering and in need of care. We, instead of treating them as human beings with dignity who are entitled to treatment, they're, they're, they're treated like profit centers. And how can we make more money off of these people? And that is the exact backwards, uh, incorrect way to view human beings that need health care. Um, and the reason that I believe it's important to vote socialist is that uh, if you were to come to the DSP and say that, oh, you know, universal health care, that's just a nice to have, but it's okay to vote for candidates who don't support it, you'd get laughed out of the room. Um, <laughs> there are no socialist party candidates who are not 100% all day, every day in favor of universal health care as the only way forward. The, the alternatives are simply unacceptable. Thank you. Um, and I want to tell you a little bit about uh, my family and my extended family. My, my dad has stage 4 medullary thyroid cancer. And... This, the system that we have is, is not taking care of him, despite the fact that my dad worked his whole life and, and had employment, and, and my mom still is currently employed, and, and he's covered by her care. He's on disability. So why are my parents going broke? Why are my parents having to pay so much money out of pocket for, for his absolutely necessary tests and treatment and follow-up appointments? Um, and I know that there are so many families out there just like mine going through this asking themselves how they're going to pay their bills because he was diagnosed with the condition, certainly not of his choosing, not that it matters either way, that um, is jeopardizing their ability to exist. Uh, they are now, they're always looking for more affordable housing options because they're practically being uh, build out of their apartment. You know, rent rent goes up every year, and the the bills do not go down. They they pile up and they stack up. And what's the answer to this? GoFundMe, a, a you caring page? No. This this is it's insulting and it's demeaning that that this is what we have to talk about when we talk about practical solutions to fill in those gaps for care. This is, it's not acceptable. Um, it's not something that should even come up in the conversation when we're talking about how people's care will be funded. The fact remains that universal health care is practical and is realistic and it's happening all over the world. And the only thing ridiculous about it is that we're not already actively participating and engaging in it right here across the country and in Washington state. <laughs> So, so that's how it is personally affecting my family, but it is personally affecting my extended family throughout Washington. There are, did you know that there are 47,000 people who are uninsured in Denny Heck's jurisdiction? Denny Heck does not support universal health care, and neither does, neither does Patty Murray. And and neither does Maria Cantwell. Why? This is. Are you kidding me? This is. It's ridiculous. It's it's a slap in the face. It is. Yeah. What in the hell? Um, and and so I will tell you as a since I am currently running a political campaign. You know, endorsements are important. It's also important who you're not endorsed by. I will not be seeking the endorsement of Denny Heck. I will not be seeking support or donations or funding from any candidate or organization that is in tandem with uh, with big pharma and the healthcare industry. Um, I'm running a people-powered campaign funded entirely by individual contributions, and guess what? It's entirely possible. We can do that. It's uh, <laughs> it's not outrageous or or uh, impossible to, to run a viable campaign representing people and uh, having the integrity to speak 
truth to power about the values that we will bring to this position. And so again, if I were elected as, as a, a city council member, what will I do? Um, the answer is absolutely everything in my power because every elected official at every level of government must be engaged in the fight for universal health care. That's why we're here to represent people's needs. The vast majority um, of of people in Washington, we know they, they support universal health care. The, the majority of Washington, Washingtonians support it. Um, but even if they don't, it is the right thing to do. We know that universal health care costs is actually cheaper than what we have now. But even if it wasn't, it's the right thing to do. So, so all of the, the arguments, the... Uh, the, the strange opposition that is floated across about, I mean, it, it's its incorrect and it's inaccurate and, and it's insulting because we, we don't need, are we really going to quibble over numbers when we're talking about saving people's lives and ensuring that they have uh, equitable access to quality health care? Uh, again, for, for people who, um, know, regardless of their background, people of all genders, all orientations, all races, employed or unemployed, we have have to uncouple employment from uh, insurance status. Yeah. This will, thank you, this will drive our economy because if, you know, we tell people if you want insurance, go get a job. Well, if you're employed by a small business owner with under 50 employees, they're not required to give you health care insurance, health care coverage. What then? You know, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not fair. We're moving the goalposts. So if we separate these two things, we guarantee that everyone of every age has access to single pair of health care. Um, it, it just makes it a moot issue. So, uh, so that is, uh, I will be supporting um, universal health care uh, every way I can, whenever I can. I will use uh, my platform, my visibility, uh, my uh, every resource at my disposal to promote universal health care, and I will be actively confronting any and all politicians who have the audacity to suggest to us that our health care is the, a throwaway, a nice-to-have issue, because it's not. It is absolutely integral, um, and it's something that should have happened a long time ago. The time is now. So, thank you. So... Again, just uh, just to wrap up, I'm I'm so pleased to see you all here today. Um, I, if you happen to live in Tumwater um, and you want to know that you will be able to support a candidate who is uh, who is uncompromising when it comes to our right to universal health care, uh, please. Uh, I would I would truly appreciate your vote because I want to represent you and fight for you uh, in every way that I can. Again, my name is Chelsea Rustad, running for Tumwater City Council Position Five. Thank you all for being here today. Sounds like everyone's catching on by now, but let's give Chelsea another round of applause. So one thing I wanted to mention before I get into two more thank yous is that our revolution here actually has a pretty cool uh, kind of cheat sheet to local candidates who uh, support single payer health care. So check that out. Um, and then two more thank yous. I wanted to thank our man Matt over here, running the sound, donating in his equipment today. And Yana Cook from Our Revolution in Thurston County. So it's, next we're gonna hear from a national Bernie delegate, a board member of Election Justice USA, and coincidentally, the woman who is going to challenge Denny Heck next election cycle, Sam Marie Borelli. Hey, everybody. Hey. Is everyone feeling all right? Yeah. Every single time that I have the privilege to stand at these steps, the magnitude of what happens when I don't care if there's five people standing on these steps. The magnitude of what's created when two or more gather in the name of something that's right for the people. 
It's humbling, and I thank every one of you. Really, thank you for taking your time out on this beautiful day to come here and give your time and your energy to something that is such an immutable principle for all of us. We sit here for those who aren't here that may not even realize that they should be. <laughs> so give yourselves a heartfelt applause. I want to thank whole Washington for taking up this banner of single payer for our state. Because, you know, HR 676 in and of itself is important, but what it says, when we have an organization to stand up and say, even if that doesn't go through, we're going to make sure we as Washingtonians have it. So, Whole Washington, thank you. So I'm not going to be long. Usually I never have uh, any written notes, but you know, uh, this was such an important uh, subject that I didn't want to just go off the cuff today. I wanted to make sure that I remembered everything that was on my heart that I wanted to share. Um, as Eric said, my name is Tambourine Borelli, and I am a candidate for Washington's 10th Congressional District. And I am running against the incumbent who not just doesn't support single payer, but boldly rejects single payer. And if that was not bad enough, <laughs> in his town halls, has, I might even say, the arrogance and confidence to look his constituents in the eye, and I was there, and have it on tape, to tell us, those that put him in office, Exactly. That not only does he reject single payer, but that none of us will ever change his mind on the subject. And he didn't even stop there. But that we were wrong because we do support it. Get the heck out. <laughs> I think we just created a hashtag, I'm not sure. So we live in one of the most progressive and forward-thinking states in the country. I mean, you know, Washington leads the way. And I know that D.C., Washington, D.C., is known for being the home of politics. But I'd like to think that our home here in Washington, that we're the new Washington, that, that we are the ones, the driving force that will create what politics will be and should be. Not because we have deep pockets, but because it's driven by the people who are committed to making it so. The people that are sitting here on the steps and people like you. We're leading the nation with issues like single payer, fight for a living wage, not just a minimum wage where you've got to get two and three jobs just to be comfortable, but a living wage right? Everyone should be able to rest with a living wage and not be filled with anxiety about just basic needs. We fight for things like that. And we fight for things like housing first, right? Housing first. We should not in 2017 still have fellow human beings, women, men, and
and children, babies on the street. It shouldn't be in the greatest country of the world. It shouldn't be. We have an opportunity here in Washington to lead the country back into sanity. In this rather bizarre time that we all find ourselves just shaking our heads in disbelief, like, really? Are we really here <laughs> in this place? I'm running for Congress because we do have a crisis in this country. And I'll say it, Donald Trump <laughs> Indeed. Donald Trump is merely a symptom of a greater problem. When we, the people, are not getting what we want and need from our representatives, it's a problem. If, see, here's the root of that. Single payer, all of these issues that we feel so strongly about, it all boils down to representation. If we cannot get our representatives to re represent us and what we care about, it's a problem. Do you think it's a problem? Yeah. Let me hear, is it a problem? Yeah. It's a problem. It's a problem because our representatives are paid to not listen to us. They are instead listening to someone. They're listening to their high priced corporate interest, not our interest, corporate interests, corporate cartel. Now, if they're listening to them, how can, how can a politician represent us if they are getting paid exorbitant amounts of money to represent the interests of corporations, insurance companies, pharmaceutical companies, oil companies, everything that says big business and nothing that says us, you, me, we, the people. I asked my opponent, Denny Heck, at one town hall recently, I stood up and I respectfully asked him, I said, you know, um, and I actually said, with all due respect, do you not support single payer because it would go against the interests of the insurance companies who incidentally, when I look at your campaign finance reports, are the biggest donors to your campaign. Is that why? You know what he said? Just like most polit politicians do. His answer was not an answer. It was a polished, rehearsed, platitude pivoting, as I think Van Jones says, non-burger, <laughs> no meat, no cheese in there. He didn't, he, he didn't answer the question. All, you know, what he says in regard to why he's against single payer, <laughs> which is kind of ironic. You know, he says, what about all the insurance company people that lose their jobs? <laughs> Nursing home people that don't lose their jobs. Really? What about the people that are going to lose their lives if they don't have it? What about that? <laughs> Representative Heck. I thought it was notable that within his platitudes, he looked me in the eye and says, you know, with Tambourine, if you feel that you have to look at campaign finance reports, that's fine. You can go ahead and do that. But I've led a, a career of serving the people and... I sleep well at night. He said that.
I was being probably a little too respectful because I would have said, I bet you do, Representative <laughs> Heck. I bet you do. He, incidentally, is one of the most wealthiest congressmen on the Hill, worth $6.8 million, just a little fun fact. So here's the thing, you guys. Nothing will ever change. Nothing. As long as this system is allowed to continue, and here's the bad news, it will continue. And not only will it continue, but it has the potential to get worse. If we do not support candidates like you saw here today, Renata Rawlings, Bill Fishburne, Lisa Parsley, it will not change whether it's on the local level, the state level, and especially congressional candidates who are not beholden to the corruption, but are committed to you, the people, us, the people. It's critical that we not only change and replace the representatives who do not and will not represent us, it is imperative that we change and replace the system of Washington that perpetuates politics as usual. Can I hear you say change and replace? Change and replace. One more time, change and replace. Change and replace. That's what I'm talking about. You know, one clue that we as a people have outgrown, we've outgrown this political shenanigans way of being of this system. The clue is this, we just aren't buying it anymore. We're just not standing for it anymore. The jig is up, it's over. Can I get an amen on that? Yeah. <laughs> the jig is up. <laughs> See? Together, we must continue in the spirit. And it doesn't matter, you know, who you voted for, but one thing we can agree on, upon, we have to continue in the spirit of Senator Sanders' political yeah. revolution. Yeah. We have to find our way through this muck and this mire that we are drowning in. We've got to find our way <laughs> through, that, through that nasty swamp. And we have to, to find a way to, to tap back in to that magic that we all created last year. Do you remember it? Yeah. Remember what that felt like? Right? I do. <laughs> it's, the, it's the magic that pulled an apathetic, you know, I was sold out for being apathetic, non-voter. It pulled me out of my apathetic sleep. You know, we were almost there. That was the beauty of it, how much that we accomplished. That's right. See, because, brothers and sisters, it's not enough. It's not enough for us to just resist what is in this moment. It's not enough. We have to reconnect to the power and commitment that had us filling stadiums all over the country last year, because that was powerful. The momentum that had us speaking truth to power, looking it in the eye and say, we are going to crumble this corruption infested system until it is in ruins on the ground. That is why I am running as a candidate. A candidate, listen, here's the secret for a brand new party. 
a brand new party that's created by supporters of Bernie Sanders, <laughs> inspired by the magical truth that that wise man once said, and he said, not me. Ah! He said, not me. Ah! So, appropriately, the name of this new political party that's rooted in the magic of how we all came together is appropriately called the party for us. <laughs> it's a party that will not take corporate donations and a party whose DNA is rooted in the people's agenda and rings in harmony with the people's platform. A party that from the bottom up, the bottom up, passionately supports single payer health care statewide and 676. Tuition free college, a clean energy economy, public funding of campaigns, and election integrity, among others. Now is the time. Now, now, now is the time to build a new government with a brand new Congress, Sarah Smith. A new nation. See, because revolution, it takes us all, doesn't it? It's, it's a cliche, but it's the truth. United we stand. Divided we fall. Outraged at all the injustices we are, whether they be political, social, economic, racial, or ecological, ready to take them all on. All of us are. And we prove that every time we take a visit and sit on these steps in the Capitol, not waiting for a savior, because our freedom will come when we refuse to give up and quit until we get for what we came for. Because single payer can't wait. Single payer, can it wait? No. I want to hear you say, as soon as I say something, I want to hear you say can't wait. Can we do that? We're going to do a little answer back. Single payer. Can't wait. Tuition and debt-free education. Can't wait. Getting corruption out of politics. Can't wait. Secured elections. Can't wait. Clean energy. Can't wait. Equal rights and equal pay. Can't wait. The whole damn dollar. Can't wait. Social security. Can't wait. Our veterans. Can't wait. Justice for all. Closing, thank you again. Again, it's always uh, not just a pleasure, but it's an honor always to stand at these steps. And that's not, I'm not just giving you a platitude. I mean that with all my heart. I'm running to take Denny Heck's seat. Yeah. And you're gonna win! <laughs> From your lips to God's ears, as my dad always says. We have to continue on. We have to be, whether it doesn't matter what letter you have behind your name, but if we are united in the policies for the American people, if we refuse to let petty things divide us, we will be victorious. We will get single payer passed. We will get all of the laundry lists of progressive issues passed if we do it together. My name is Tambourine Borelli. Thank you so much. And if you'd like to go and know more about my campaign or the new party for us, our table's over there. Thank you so much and have a beautiful rest of your day. Cheer for Tambourine. All right, so I got a couple more thank yous um, and, and one reiteration. So first, Tracy Carlos takes pictures at all of these events, documenting history. 
And Kim, who's being helped today by Chris John, out videotaping the whole thing. Let's give them a big round of applause. But in the slew of thank yous earlier, there was one that I think that we need to really point out, and that is Georgia. Georgia, can you come, come out here? Georgia, 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 Georgia. Georgia drives all around this state. She talks to so many organizations. She goes on radio stations. She talks to people everywhere about single payer and she is doing everything that she can in her power to give all of us single payer health care. So I just want to let's give Georgia a Georgia chant again loud and proud. Georgia, 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 Georgia. So we have two more speakers, and I do have one quick announcement, too, where did Nicole go? Nicole from Represent Us wants to tell you a little bit about something they're doing. My name's Nicole, and I work with Represent Us, and I want to ask a question. How come you don't have single payer yet? What's gotten in the way all these years? Yeah, it's called corruption. And there's all kinds of ways that corruption is legal in America. So before you leave this rally, please stop by the Represent Us table. We'll tell you what we do. Support the American Anti-Corruption Act, which is a model resolution towards comprehensive anti-corruption reform above and beyond overturning Citizens United. It directly attacks all the different things that are getting in the way of us getting single payer and us getting our government and our voice heard. So super important, stop by and uh, you just basically put your name and your zip code in, but please stop by and support this campaign because it supports every other issue that matters to you. We can't get it done and we can't keep it done without these supports. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. So next we have our Thurston County Auditor, Mary Hall, who actually got her start in politics fighting for national health care. Please welcome Mary. Thanks. It's kind of hard to believe that here we are, it's 2017 and we still don't have single payer health care. I in uh, I grew up in a union household, so I had great health care as a kid and I took it for granted. I worked as a young adult. I had health care because I had a fairly decent job. I met a guy, got married. He was a small business owner. And wow, what a shock. Um, I quit my job to work with him and all of a sudden we had no health care and to go out and buy it on the street was crazy. It was so amazingly expensive. It just blew my mind. So when I saw an ad in the newspaper, there was an organization called Washington Citizen Action and they were working on single payer health care. I thought that was a pretty good idea. So I started knocking on doors in 1990. 1990. I mean, 1990, and here we are, 2017. We're the only industrialized country in the world that doesn't have single-payer health care. It's nuts. But one of the reasons we don't have single-payer health care is because we've got too much money in politics. So we have so many issues, and there are so many important issues in this world today. But I think there are a couple that are really important. One, we've got to publicly fund our campaigns so candidates and elected officials are not beholden to corporate dollars. We've got to overturn Citizens United. That is nuts. I mean, corporations aren't people and they shouldn't be able to buy our politicians and that's what's happening today. But the thing that's really important is we've got to get people to vote, folks. I mean, that's my job. That's what I do as county auditors. You know, I encourage people to get out and vote. This recent primary, we had 23% turnout. 23%, and that's only talking about the people that are registered. So talk to your friends and your family, get them registered to vote, get them out to vote, even in these little elections. I call, you know, special elections and municipal elections are kind of like practice elections. They get used to voting. Once people get used to voting, they continue to vote all the time. And we've got a great opportunity in this state, folks, if we can, you know, reach out to your 
relatives across the country, if we can take back the 45th district, we can control the state Senate here in Washington state, which would give us Democratic House, Democratic Senate, and a Democratic governor. And if we put enough pressure on them through rallies like this, hopefully we can get them to pass a single payer health care bill in Washington. If they don't, Let's get this initiative signed. Let's get it on the ballot in 2018 because we can't have people dying on the streets, getting kicked out of hospitals. So, okay, raise your hand if you're gonna vote in November. Woo! Yes, all right. And really, folks, if you can get your family, friends ready to vote, we have gotta take back our country. We've gotta get people cured. You know, I still don't understand the reason for insurance companies. I mean, they're the middleman that we can get rid of. And let's not let our elected officials use them and the jobs that we're going to lose as an excuse for not having single payer health care. So please register, get out and vote, and let's start getting some progressive change in this country. And, you know, the country's a mess, so let's start right here at home. Thanks. <laughs> Come on, a little bit louder than that. So the auction is closing. So if, if you want to be able to use the Trump toilet paper, you better hurry up and get your chance. Um, but our final speaker of this event is the chair of Whole Washington, Kathy Angel. Please welcome her, Kathy. I'm not uh, used to being a public speaker, so I just I want to thank everyone for coming out today uh, for this event. And we all know how important health care is for all. It's a human right. It's a basic need. Um, I'm a registered nurse. I've been a nurse since 1980. I grew up in Wisconsin. I moved to Washington in 1996. I live in Squim, and I work in Port Angeles at the hospital there. In 2002, I was diagnosed with lymphoma. I have chronic lymphocytic leukemia. I went through chemotherapy uh, and I exhausted all my short-term disability. I went back to work before I didn't uh, choose to go in long-term disability. I was anxious to get back to work, but found through all the treatments and everything that uh, my immune system was quite weakened, and when I was working with patients who came in sick, I got chronically sick all the time. So I was forced uh, to, not forced, they were really nice enough to help me go into some temporary uh, jobs while people were off sick themselves, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, eventually those, uh, those temporary positions were no longer there, so I was forced out of work, and I did have to go through bankruptcy. I was lucky enough, uh, eventually, to the hospital called me back. One of the doctors was doing a study to um, measure best practices of one of the oncologists, so they asked me to come in and review charts and see if he was meeting the grade for that. So that became what I learned to do. I now work in case management and utilization review, and uh, I see how people struggle all the time with uh, insurance issues and uh, insurance denials. Uh, it's crazy how... Uh, What's your face closer to the mic? Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, but anyway, everyone struggles. We're all this close to bankruptcy from healthcare issues, and it's not right. We all deserve healthcare. We all need healthcare. Um, and I've seen it in patients where they, the families don't know what to do. I also see people, because they're on certain medications that are too expensive, they aren't allowed to go to a nursing home because the nursing home is responsible for paying that medication. And so they're refusing patients who need to go for therapy. It's, this is not a good system. We need to uh, get single payer for everyone. 
uh, so that everyone is included and covered. And so thank you so much for coming um, and sign up uh, to volunteer if you want. In the uh, fall, we'll be getting out ready to gather signatures after our initiative is written. And so we're gonna need help with that. And anybody who's willing to help us out, sign up. Thank you. You know what to do. Yeah. Let's give a round of applause for Eric for being one of the best MCs ever. Yeah. Well, gosh, gee golly. <laughs> so the Sarah Smith campaign has actually donated a whole bunch of water. If anybody's thirsty, feel free to take one. And I, would, I just want to thank everybody for being here today because politics requires people showing up. When we show up, we make things happen. We make the changes that actually benefit the people. So give yourselves a big round of applause. There's a lot of great groups out here. Go find out some new things. Meet some new people. Sign up at wholewashington.org for the newsletter to find out more. And thank you all. Single payer now! Yeah.